Colleagues, I rise to just claim another small step in the pandemic of racism with SCR 27. We all watched as black and brown communities disproportionately were contracting and dying from COVID-19 virus. The overall questions were why, how? The common response was pre-existing conditions, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, the gamut of conditions due to the lack of stable health care. So much so, the state of Michigan initiated a coronavirus racial disparities task force with leaders and elected officials to address this assessment. Addressing when we say pre-existing condition, we are talking about one's history. Well, that evolves from the history of America and black America and racism's impact on our black and brown communities. Those communities all share common social and economic factors designed by systematic racism, social determinants of health already in place before this pandemic. These factors increase black people's risk of COVID-19, living in crowded housing. It impacts our childhood, our upbringing, living in public and segregated housing, predatory housing practices such as the GI Bill and redlining. The reality is there is no safe way to social distance in black and brown communities. We work low or minimum wage frontline jobs, which are basically the essential jobs. First, the, the bus driver, the fast food worker, the nurse. We have inconsistent access to health care. We either have no or public health insurance, a provider who dismisses us with implicit bias, little mental health or social service support, chronic health conditions from all forms of discriminatory policies that contribute to our neglected neighborhoods, pollution and lack of nutrition from no grocery stores and such. We are stressed daily just living in our black skin through dismantled education. We literally in this state have a lawsuit for literacy. Household income equality, discrimination, subtle racism, daily violence, inhumane police interaction and police brutality. And let's not forget the actual judicial system. This all narrows down to one single factor. The number one, I'd say the only pre-existing condition that truly impacts black people and their health is racism. Racism led to those social determinants of health. Racism led to police brutality and profiling. Racism led to redlining. Redlining is the systematic tool to deny various services by federal government agencies, local governments, as well as the private sector. Neighborhoods with high proportion of minority residents are more likely to be redlined than other neighborhoods with similar household income, housing age and type, and other determinants of risk, but different racial comparisons. You can put two adjacent neighborhoods together and one neighborhood probably has a 15 year longer lifespan than the other neighborhood just based on these racist factors. These communities are all undeniably where the COVID hotspots are. Where you live matters to your health and racism can only be solved through social justice, police and justice reform to place us on a path of healing and unity. COVID put the world, America and Michigan on pause to put racism and police brutality on trial publicly. For the world to see what we have been detailing and expressing for generations, I dare not read the names of the martyrs that would emphatically give testimony to this resolution. However, they are no longer here and it would take an additional eight minutes and 46 seconds to recite them. Black lives matter. This doesn't mean all lives don't matter. They do. It just means black lives are constantly under threat and we deserve the same rights you do. Michigan's top health official, Dr. Caldoun, stated that the use of data to show racism is a public health crisis so help us address the public health pandemic of racism. Help us take on hate. SCR 27 should be passed unanimously, bicameral and bipartisan. Thank you.